Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube. My name is Rosie and in today's video I'm going to be talking to you about the positives and negatives of being self-employed. I know it's everyone's dream job to work from home, work for yourself, do what you love um, and there are a lot of positives but there are also a couple of negatives that I just want to touch on and just basically let you know from my point of view what I think the pros and cons are. Um, so yeah, we're going to start with the positives because I like to do that, you know, start start on a good note. Um, so I've got a list on my phone here. Uh, the, first, the first one, the first one I've written down is that you get to make your own schedule. So you can work when you want, which is for me amazing. So I tend to spend my mornings pretty relaxed. I tend to wake up whenever I wake up, which is usually around half eight, nine o'clock in the morning. I don't ever set an alarm. I sleep as long as I need to sleep because sleep for me is very important and I'm very lucky that I can do that. So I tend to wake up around nine. Um, usually kind of have a pretty chill morning, don't do much, kind of watch YouTube or a bit of Netflix, go for a walk, do some yoga, have a nice relaxing breakfast. Um, very relaxing and then I tend to work probably from like lunchtime up until the evening, up until I'm kind of finished. So that's the great thing is you can set your own schedule. If you're more of a morning person you can work from five or six in the morning until you know two or three in the afternoon and still do a full day's work but on your time schedule rather than on the office hours or when your man manager or boss wants you to work um so that i would say is one of the best things about being self-employed is that you get to work whenever you want and yes yeah, at your own schedule basically the second thing is that you get to do what you're passionate about so i'm passionate about photography i love it um videography is slowly becoming a passion like I do want to enjoy it, I'm just still learning. But anyway, photography. So I love photography, I would do it for free. So the fact that I get to do something that I'm really passionate about every single day and work towards my dreams is amazing. And obviously when you work for somebody else, you can't really do that because you're working towards their dream. You're making their dreams become a reality rather than working on your own dreams. So that's definitely an amazing thing as well is that you can you know, work on something that you truly love and that you really want to do. Um, you know, put your whole heart and soul into it and really try and push forward and do well. Um, I find as well I do better work when I'm working for myself because I'm passionate and because I want it to succeed. Whereas when I've had jobs in the past before, you know, I'm not, I mean, I'll do the job, but I'm not particularly passionate about it. So I don't, you know, try as hard as I would do when I'm working for myself. The next one is that because it's your business, you can do what the heck you want. So if you want to try something new, do it. If you want to do something differently, do it. You don't have somebody else behind you saying, no, you can't do that because of X, Y, Z. You can't try this because of this reason. You know, you can do exactly what you want to do whenever you want to do it. So YouTube for me is a great example. Like I have wanted to do this for a while, for a couple of years. I've kind of done it a couple of times, not super well, but this time I'm actually sticking to it and I'm really trying and, you know, really trying something new and something that scares me, but I feel like I'm getting better and better every time I film a new video. I feel like it's better than the last, which is amazing. So in terms of my photography, I started doing families and bachelorettes and couples and um, engagements and weddings and all these type of things. And then one day I randomly decided to try dog photography because we were looking after a dog, photographed him and the pictures were great. So then I photographed more dogs and more dogs and it's kind of gone from there. And then that's what started my dog photography business, was from just trying something new and it kind of exploded into this whole new business. Um, it's kind of the same with the yoga photography, it's taken a little bit longer, especially now with the coronavirus and I was doing photo shoots. Um, but it started off as, oh, I'd like to photograph my friend who does yoga, get some nice pictures for her for her Instagram. And then it kind of moved on from there and I kind of started another business doing yoga photography. So it's great that you have the opportunity to start new things and try new things and you can do something for a month and decide actually that doesn't work or try it for six months or just even once and you can have the flexibility and the freedom to do what you want without having somebody to tell you that you can't do it, which I think is great. Especially for a creative person who wants to be creative and try new things, it's the best thing is that you can do whatever you want when you want for yourself and to grow and to try new things. The next positive thing is that you can have time off when you want. So over Christmas time, just before Christmas in December, my grandma was in hospital with pneumonia in England and I'm obviously in Miami. So I was able to fly home and spend two weeks at home with her, you know, bringing her home and helping her and bring her back into health. So I slept on the floor with her. I looked after her all day. Like obviously my parents were there, but they were busy being, you know, doing their things. Anyway, I spent a lot of time with my grandma and it was really lovely to go home and to be able to have that time off from work and off from life and just know that I'm okay to do that. 
I know that with most jobs you have to ask for time off and kind of plan it six months ahead of time. You can't just decide actually I'm going to go home for two weeks and sod the job kind of thing. So that's another amazing thing is you can take time off when you need to. And also for holidays and things like vacations and weddings and... I need to turn the aircon off. Sorry, I had to turn the aircon off because it gets um, loud and noisy in here. Anyway, so things like vacations and weddings and family things like gatherings, um, friend get-togethers, anything like this. Obviously, you can arrange your time and your work around different people's schedules. So you're generally the most flexible person and you can kind of fit yourself around other people. So rather than having to ask for time off for a wedding, for example, for your cousin's wedding or something, you can just plan your work around that and make sure that you can go, basically. And then the last positive I wrote down is that you can work from home and there's no need to commute anywhere. I think this is amazing because I hate travelling, well I love travelling, I hate sitting in a car to go to an office to sit there for 8 hours then come home again. Like that 2 hours of travelling or however long it is for you is such a waste of time, it's, I just, waste of time, waste of energy, why bother? Like the fact that I can work from home is amazing, I just get up, walk to the couch and I'm, I can work straight away. Which also means I can work whenever I want to work. So like I said, I can work at 5pm, I can work at 10pm, I can work at 2 in the morning, I can work at 8 in the morning. Because my work is at home, it means that I can do everything from here and I don't need to go anywhere for certain things or, you know, bring things to and from the office all the time. I'm just here. And it also saves a lot of money on commuting because I know that like Ubers and cars and insurance and petrol and gas and everything, um, it can stack up and it can be expensive if you have to travel every day. So the fact that you can work from home is also one of my favourite things about working from home as a self-employed person. So that was my five positives of being self-employed. Now I'm going to move on to the negatives and the first one is that I work all the time. Like I said, it's great that I can work at 10pm but it also means that I do work at 10pm. I, you know, I find it very difficult to separate my work life from my personal life. I often work in the evenings, I often work in the weekends, in fact Mostly I do that because I enjoy having my mornings kind of off and for me it does mean that I work later in the day because that's when my brain is more active. I'm a bit of a night owl so, I've had, so I have my best ideas at night time. I work better at night time so it means that you know in the evenings when Jeremy's finished work and he wants to relax with me I'm like, like buzzing and getting all my ideas out and trying new things and you know working on my business. So that's a bit of a struggle trying to figure out the balance between work life and home life when they're in the same place. I know that some people recommend having like a designated workspace and having a routine and like waking up and getting dressed. These don't really work for me. I, The thing I love about being self-employed is the freedom of it, being able to do what I want when I want on that day and not having a routine. But if you need a routine, obviously that might work for you. But yeah, um, I do struggle with working, like I said, in the evenings and weekends and long hours and long days and maybe when sometimes I should just be relaxing. So when I've had previous jobs um, before now being a photographer, obviously I would work the nine to five job and then as soon as you leave the office, you can switch off. You don't have to think about it or worry about it again until the next day. You can have your evenings and the weekends to yourself and actually enjoy it and actually relax and actually take your brain away from work. Whereas when you work from home, you're quite often always on the ball, like you're always working. Even if it's just your brain with ideas, you're still constantly on. You don't really have that off time. Apart from, I find when I go on vacation, that's when I can switch off at home. I, my brain is generally active all the time, thinking of new ideas, new promotions, new advertising, things I can do. You know, my brain's always on and that's something that I do struggle with um, a little bit. The next negative is the pressure to make money. So obviously when you have a 9 to 5 job or any other type of kind of full time job it's you know you're guaranteed to have that money every single month and it's easy and it's stress relieving and it's comforting to know that you're going to get that money at the end of the month you're going to be paid. When you're self employed you have to make all the money yourself if you don't make any money you make zero money if you make a lot of money you'd make a lot of money. So it's a double edged sword in that you know it can be amazing and it also can be scary because you don't always have lots of work all the time especially now with the coronavirus like we're seeing a lot of small businesses are going out of business they're having to close they're not getting clients they're not getting paid a lot of people are struggling and that's the problem with self-employment and small businesses like this is that you rely on somebody else to pay your bills so you know if nobody wants to book in a dog photo shoot for three months I don't get paid for three months 
Whereas if I worked in a hotel or a shop or a restaurant, you know, people always go to those things. So then I would just have a cons consistent salary every month. So that's also scary having the pressure of like, I need to make money. I need to make at least X amount per month. Um, so yeah, the pressure of that can be scary. Luckily for me, Jeremy makes enough money that um, he can afford to pay the bills and food and everything we need and any of any money that I make is for extras for like holidays or for um, just fun money generally or savings things like that but so we can afford to live here with Jeremy's salary but I do still want to earn money and I still do feel the pressure to earn money and to earn enough money that we can save and that we can go on these vacations like we've had holidays booked to Australia and to Chicago and to Europe over summer obviously we're not sure now if we can go because of the coronavirus crisis but had we been able to go, you know, the money that I earn would pay for us being there, like the food and accommodation and things. And if I don't earn any money, then we don't have any money to spend on holiday. So I know it's kind of, it seems a little bit like, oh, poor me, you know, first world problems. But there is that pressure there of I need to make money else, you know, my couple suffers kind of thing. My relationship suffers a little bit because we can't do what we want to do because I'm not pulling the weight. So that's something else to keep in mind is that if you... You know, if you don't deal well with financial pressure and financial issues, maybe um, just think about it because, you know, the struggle is real and the pressure is real and, yeah, it can be worrying. So the next thing is the responsibility. Um, I love the responsibility of being in control and having complete control over everything that happens in my business, like with the pricing, the advertising, the marketing, everything is my decision and I love that. But it also means that if I don't do anything, nothing gets done. So if I decide to have a week off work, or like I went home to my, see my grandma for two weeks before Christmas, those two weeks, I didn't do anything, so nothing got done in terms of posting on Instagram, advertisements, commenting, messaging people, liking photographs, thinking about pricing, thinking about, you know, different plans for 2020 or different events that we can go to or all these different things that goes into the business. When I don't do anything, nothing gets done. There's not a second person here to help me out. There's not somebody else that I'm hiring to do stuff. So there's a lot of responsibility on my shoulders to constantly push forward, constantly try new things, constantly try and better the business and try and you know improve it and earn more money. So the responsibility is huge, which I like a lot of aspects of it. Um, I do like being in control of my business, but then it is hard that, you know, like I said, if, if I don't do something, nothing gets done. So yeah, all the pressure is on me, all the responsibility is on me, but equally all the blame is on me if nothing happens or if things go wrong. So yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not easy being self-employed, but you know, I just, I'm just sharing my thoughts. I don't need to, I don't want to put it like a super negative spin on being self-employed because I think it's amazing. Ultimately, I think it's the best. It's what, I don't think I could go back to having a normal job, normal job. Um, but there are negatives, so that's why I'm just telling you these. So there are two more negatives left. One of them is that when you're self-employed, you have to know how to do everything, and I mean everything. So I answer emails, I post on social media, I comment and like pictures, I send messages, I do invoices, I do taxes, I do marketing, I do advertising, I do pricing, I do... Oh, what else do I do? Spreadsheets to figure out events and things like this. I think of new ideas. I have to get the products ready to show people. I have to plan events. Think about prop design for my mini sessions. I have to buy dog food and treats to entice the dogs and dog toys and things like this. There's a whole lot that goes into the business. It's not just photography. In fact, the photography is maybe 5% of the business. The rest of the 95% is all the rest of the boring stuff that no one wants to do. So that's the thing with self-employment is that you have to be maybe not amazing at 20 different things but you definitely you definitely have to have some sort of grasp on okay how can I market myself how can I advertise how can I have new promotions how can I think about my pricing how can I get new clients how can I do the invoices easily how can I do my taxes easily like there's a whole lot of things that go into having a business and being self-employed that you don't really know before you start your business so having to do 15, 20 different things that I have no idea how to do, I've never studied accounting or business, I've never studied finance and marketing and advertising, my background is in textiles and design and creative work, so I'm very creative but all the kind of serious or whatever side of things is very new to me so I'm learning on the go 
Um, but yeah, having to know a bit of everything is hard. Um, but I think you get there. I think as long as you ask for advice from people, so long as you, you know, research and make sure that you're finding the best advice for what suits you and your business, you're going to be fine. But just know before you do start a business that you're going to have to know these things. You can't really, I, well, I can't afford to pay someone to do graphic design, someone to do advertising, someone to do marketing, someone to do SEO, someone to do invoices, someone to do taxes, you know, if you hire somebody for all the different jobs that there are, it's going to cost you so much money to hire everybody, to pay everybody. So it's best to learn it yourself, but just be aware that you do have to know these things yourself. And finally, the last thing is, I guess, loneliness. So because I work for myself, with myself, I spend a lot of time on my own. Obviously, I do speak to Jeremy a lot about my business, about different ideas and plans, and he helps, you know, brainstorm things and think of new ideas but ultimately a lot of it is on my own so you know if I have problems I have to talk to myself <laughs> if I have ideas I talk to myself if I have you know anything that happens it's all by myself so the only interaction I have is when I comment on Instagram photographs and things like this to try and get new clients answering emails and then obviously when people do come for the photo shoots which like I said is probably about five percent of the time so um, yeah, it can be quite lonely knowing that you're, you know, working on this project on your own, you don't particularly have a group of people to help you and to push you forward and to do things to make it easier for you. At least not at the start, maybe at some point you can start to hire people to help you out and to grow your business more and, you know, make the process a bit easier, but, defi but definitely at the beginning um, you do everything yourself and it can be a lonely, a lonely thing to do. I'm so grateful that Jeremy can work from home because it means that actually I spend a lot of time with him. Even if we don't talk all day every day, he's sat on the desk here. <laughs> you can't really see, he's sat on the desk and I'm sat on the sofa. So we spend all day together even if we're not talking all day together, but I feel like if he went to an office every day, I think I would feel really lonely just working on my project on my own without kind of any conversation or any back and forth. So that's the last thing, is just that loneliness might be something um, that might affect you and you know your mental health and things like that but anyway generally I love being self-employed I'd recommend it to everybody if you can do it try and do it because then you're working on your dreams and not somebody else's dreams you're doing something that you're passionate about something that you love something that you can't wait to do every morning um it is incredible but like I said there are a couple of downfalls anyway that's all for this video sorry if it's a little bit rambly um I hope it was a little bit useful informative um, if you're thinking about starting a business and being self-employed, please let me know down below. Let's try and shout each other out a little bit. Let me know your business idea, drop your website maybe, you know, let's have a bit of self-promotion down in the comments. If you did like this video, please do give it a big, big thumbs up. It really helps me out and subscribe for more videos. I post lifestyle kind of chit-chatty videos on Mondays, vlogs on Wednesdays and photography videos on Fridays. So I'm still testing the waters, doing lots of videos, trying lots of different things. I'm thinking about focusing more on photography and business, but I still do want to talk about things like makeup and fashion and travel and other things that I'm passionate about. So at the moment I'm keeping it quite separate. At one point I might go more photography based, we will see, but for now this is what I'm doing. So subscribe for more. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!